Hi guys, welcome to Extra Talk. Today, a very special edition with our Ajax fan from Poland, Thomas. Hello. Hi, Thomas. Uh, and of course, everybody knows Papi Mento. Hello, guys. So today, guys, uh, it's an international break. So no Ajax games. Um, we have a break. We can we can think a little bit of what's been happening with Ajax so far. And basically, I came up with something that I want to discuss with you. And this season is turning out to be one of the probably most successful seasons of Ajax. Um, we can even, even maybe, debatable, but we can even be better than the 2018-2019 season. But that's another debate. My question to you guys is, um, how did we manage to turn around this, uh, this season to be such, so successful, looking at how we started in the first couple of months and looking in, at where we are right now? Just, uh, just to elaborate a little bit more, 23 games unbeaten. So the last time we lost was the Atalanta game in the Champions League. Um, we've been we've been like winning a lot of games, a couple of draws here and there, but nothing to uh, to worry about. And the Europa League um, showing. I mean, we 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 beat Lille, and I thought Lille was a very uh, tough opponent. And young boys, we did what we had to do, and now we're facing Roma. So things are starting to look. Um, you know, starting to look really good at this point. And not to mention the Eredivisie title is almost done. 11 points, one game less than the others. So it could be 14 points even. So I've been talking a lot now. Thomas, I want your opinion on um, how you see this season evolving. And for you, what are the main reasons why we have been so successful recently? What a beautiful problem to discuss, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, well, I would start with the, I believe, the least uh, obvious thing, and uh, the reason, uh, one of the main reasons for uh, for our, you know, the, the wonderful turnaround, is Dusan Tadic, our beloved captain. Um, I believe he has been the most consistent uh, player of ours during the whole season, and uh, I believe that his attitude. Uh, it it never it never allowed the other players to you know uh, get discouraged to uh, to lose focus to to stop trying to to reach the the Ajax level yes the, something we all expect of all of them and uh, you know you know our captain he he even if he plays a bit worse you can always see fire in his eyes in in, in this very best uh, meaning you can uh, you can imagine. And uh, I believe he's been absolutely crucial um, in, in, the, in the whole process. And um, I guess it's no wonder uh, that his contract um, includes the, the past, uh, past playing period. Yeah, that's he's going to, going to stay at the club um, because he has those you know, you know, mental values that uh, elevate the club a level above. And uh, I think that um, without him, it would have been way harder uh, to get uh, where are we at. So you're singling out one player now as the least obvious uh, reason. What are your um, other reasons? Okay, uh, the other uh, player, uh, the other reason, uh, the one that's more obvious, I guess, uh, would be Edson Alvarez. Um, Edson, who many, uh, many, many supporters uh, wrote off, um, myself included. Uh, a player who, well, did something absolutely spectacular. And um, I believe that uh, around the uh, AZ games, uh, he, he started to be a real asset for the team. And that was the moment we, uh, we gained balance uh, in the midfield. Everything started to click. Uh, suddenly, uh, out of nowhere, uh, we stopped conceding that many chances, which was... Well, something new. I well, I wouldn't say that the current team is as good as uh, the eighteen nineteen one, but defense wise, even considering we don't have players like the Licht, I guess we're better organized uh, in the defending phase, and this is really really impressive. I like to behold, to be honest, uh, this is not something we would mm, normally associate with Ajax, but that is the case right now, and there's no there's no reason to complain about it. And I'd say that Edson, um, Edson Alvar has been crucial uh, to that. He's been key. And it's really good to, you know, uh, to see a player give us all a lesson like that. 
uh, it's it's been very yeah, thought provoking for the future, I'd say. Good, good. Um, look, I agree with you on the AZ game. I, I believe the the cup game, the AZ cup game, um, Den Haag was well a little bit forced to play with his second tier players at that time, and Alvarez was there and Martinez was there and. I was impressed. I, I was actually a bit nervous before the game because of so many changes, but uh, Alvarez really showed his ticket, really, and Martinez as well. And I think that from that point on, things started evolving within the team and also Ten Hag start seeing also that he must or maybe change a couple of things. And for instance, the most obvious thing is that Schurz now, compared to the first half of the season, not to blame Schurz, of course, but Schurz now has been a, a bench sitter since then. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, well, that was also that particular game we've, men we've mentioned. Um, even La Biadora was, well, way above our expectations, let's, let's say, uh, in that particular game. It might have very well been, uh, you know, like a turning point also mentally, like everything clicked suddenly. Uh, so, yeah, that was an important, um, you know, part of the season. And uh, if I may finish with, with my reasons, with my main reasons, the main one, I believe, would be that we have a very smart, uh, very calm, very patient, and very reasonable non-playing staff altogether. Uh, I mean the board, I mean the, the training, um, the, the managing staff, and so on. Um, the official YouTube channel of Ajax uh, posted uh, a video about Edwin van der Sar recently. And Mark Overmars said there that uh, they make both uh, Mark and Edwin make a good team because uh, they're both former players and they know that if something's going wrong, you need to be patient because it will turn around. Nothing nervous is, uh, is needed most of the time. And yeah, that's the case. Uh, it, it paid off uh, very well. Um, and I believe there was this mentality. I believe that Stan Hag felt that uh, he's being trusted and the whole the whole team, I believe, knew that um, there is trust in, in in all of them. That there is a project. That uh, we have an idea what what we have to do. Even though uh, right now it's it's not the, not the best place possible we're at. But and but yet, but Thomas, just to add something to that, mm -hmm. I think even Mark Overmars um, and Ten Hag they didn't expect this season to turn out like this because I remember Overmars saying in an interview earlier this uh, when the season started or progressed, that this might be a bridging or a gap year. So they were lowering a little bit the expectation. Yeah, but still, you can you can also uh, say that this was a mind game of, of some sort, yeah? So not to put too much pressure on, on everybody. And I don't know if that was uh, uh, that important, but yeah, it did the trick. Um, we were... We're very well. Uh, we, we very well can uh, dream of the trouble this season. Yeah, we, we can say it aloud. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we're not the biggest favorites in the Europa League, but it it will be no sensation if we win. Yeah, it will be perfectly reasonable. Uh, it it wouldn't make any bookmakers bankrupt. No, uh, we're a, a force to be reckoned with. Sure. sure. Okay, so let's uh, let's ask Papamento for here for his uh, for his opinion as well. Yeah, Juan. I, I mean, I just want to say uh, what Thomas said were all good points, and I could have started with that. I just want to take it a little bit more a general. Uh, I think we have some exceptional youth uh, coming through the academy. Uh, Grave Berg, eighteen. Rensch, eighteen. Jurgen Timber, I think he's nineteen. But uh, Timber just um, took over after he got his chance and put Schuurs on the bench. And it wasn't only Edson Alvarez and it wasn't only Martinez, but Timber, I mean, he's been playing right back uh, centrally with uh, with Martinez. So, um, yeah, that's that's a, a huge, uh, huge quality pulse for Ajax next to the experience they already bought. Like, for instance, uh, Klaas, uh, um, I mean, Anthony was bought for a lot of money, but you still don't know what you're going to get, you know? Um, I think the scouting also, like what they bought, Kudus, Anthony, uh, we lost big players like Donny from the Big, Ziyech, et cetera. And they came in and they did 
like they show qualities that they are they can measure themselves with those kind of players, you know. So I think Overmars did very well with uh, with scouting and buying Haller in um, in the winter break was a necessity because uh, Broby was and uh, was Zauris... it a necessity? Was it a necessity because there are a lot of debate about Haller's um, added value at this point? Also because of maybe people linking it to Broby exiting Ajax and going to uh, Red Bull. So how do you see that, uh, Thomas? I want your take on this one as well. Well, I'm going to say this. Uh, Broby and Traore were injured and we needed a striker. And for Ten Hag, uh, Tadic wasn't a striker option for uh, the, the first uh, half of the season. So we saw Labiat uh, on nine and uh, other options. So, uh, yeah, we, we did need, and I think the opportunity for Traore came too soon because I, I think with one more one more year, he could really be useful for Ajax. Um and maybe Haller wasn't bought if Broby would have signed sooner. So, yeah, I think we needed Haller. He's played great in the beginning. Last couple of matches, it wasn't top-notch, but you see that he can be a real asset for us, and it gives us options in the in the front foot. Uh, so, and I think the biggest thing is uh, Tenach lost his uh, stubbornness a little bit, you know. In the beginning of the season, it was Tadic cannot play nine. And in the Europa League now he's playing nine. And uh, Blind cannot Blind cannot play on the midfield. Midfield now he's playing midfield. Martinez wasn't used enough uh, in the first half of the season, to my uh, in my opinion. And then even even as a substitute, he would play. Uh, he would come in for Tayafico or he would come in for Blind with an injury, and he would play excellent. So. Uh, I think uh, Ten Hag saw the light, and uh, when Martinez, Alvarez, uh, I mean, just backing up Thomas, when they started playing, it looked defensively so strong. Uh, you see sometimes now matches where there is almost no shot or one shot or two shots on goal. That's crazy. I mean, with Blind in the back, we didn't have that. I mean, his forward passing is amazing, but his defending is not up to standard with Martinez and Edson Alvarez. I think those were my points. Thomas, how do you how do you view that uh, that Haller situation? Okay, uh, so when it comes to to Haller, I would say two things. First of all, it's not a very reasonable thing to you know to to, to judge the transfer by a, a short dip in form. We're yet to see what's going to happen. That's one thing. And the other thing is, uh, yes, we really needed him because. If there is an opportunity to buy a player of that caliber, it's a statement. Uh, we're Ajax, we're the best. We're far bigger than all the Dutch clubs. And, I remember, uh, I remember so even, uh, sorry to interrupt, I remember even Schmidt of PSV mentioning a couple of times, yeah, but Ajax can buy Haller, you know? Like, he was a bit frustrated. No, 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 he didn't even mention that. He said, he, he, like, he was yelling at the Hag that you guys bought the competition. Because oh, they yeah, that's true. Yeah. that's true. That's true, that's true. That's yeah, so that, that's too bad. I'm I'm so sorry about that. Uh, not uh, so. Yeah, it's it's a statement. Uh, it's uh, it's a proof of of stature that we're like twice the club any other club in the Netherlands is, and uh, yeah, in, in that regard, we really needed that. Uh, so I have no I have no like uh, doubts regarding look, whether or not it was. Yeah, needed. look, uh, Haller. To be honest, I mean, when he when he bought, was bought in uh, in January, uh, he didn't play from the start in the first game, but uh, he has been instrumental for us in January because I remember he's scoring a couple of goals. I even remember the game against Twente. Everybody, everybody is praising, of course, Huntelaar scoring the two goals at the end. You remember, but that second goal. Uh, or the first goal of Huntelaar that he scored in the final or dying mm -hmm. minute you know, of the game, that was an assist. That was an incredible header assist from Haller also. So I think I think in January, he's been instrumental for us. I think he has been a bit out of form. But also, like Ten Hag recently said, it's not easy for a player, you know, coming in and also because of the mistake not being in the Europa League. You know, he's mm -hmm. just only... He's only playing... The, the Dutch games now and, and the team is a little bit evolving and he has to just show it once a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you have to remember also that, uh, yeah, he gave access to, to Huntelaar in that uh, 20 game and so on. Uh, but he's also been crucial in the link-up play. Uh, he also goes deep very often 
And uh, his first touch is uh, second to none, I believe, in our team, uh, at times at least. So he's a very gifted player. Uh, his quality shows, even if he has a worse game, you can see in, in each and every single um, piece of players or play of his that uh, he's a wonderful player and, and a great asset. And it's a temporary dip in form, I'm sure about that. Uh, I have absolutely no worries about uh, Alea. Uh, maybe it's not a match made, made in heaven, but he really fits us. That's a number nine for Ajax. Uh, strong, technically proficient, uh, capable of scoring goals. Yeah, he, he has everything. He has everything, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that he will be a great, great success. May I respond to that? I just want to say that I think in the link of play, Tadic is still a, a level higher than uh, than um, than Haller on the nine position. But uh, I do like the the concept of a target man, and I never judge a, a striker at Ajax on how many goals he makes. I just uh, look at the striker in how important are you as a link up player for the rest of the team to to gain that attack and, and and score out of those attacks. So for me, that's much more important. Um, and if Haller can uh, constantly keep doing that um, and have less of those um, games where nothing goes right, I think every Ajax fan will be a fan of Haller and will be very happy, even though we paid 22 million or 23 million for him. And I he can. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Can. Yeah, definitely. But there was a I mean, time that, that there was a time that uh, there was no game uh, that he didn't uh, have a assist or a goal, and it was like five game, consecutive games, I believe. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Well, you know, you, my, my the numbers opinion, don't lie. No, no, of course. But look, my my opinion is that um, also as a, as a as a striker, his profile is different than what we had, because it's also possible to reach him through the air, which is not really how we play as Ajax, but it gives us an extra dimension, you know, if needed. I mean, unfortunately, unfortunately, we cannot test it in the Europa uh, games, but I think in the future, in the near future, I think also when he starts clicking with his teammates and everything like that, he'll be a huge asset to the team. That's my opinion. And I just want to come back to what you said about maybe a better season than uh, the Champions League one, but for me, Champions League have, you know, what we did there was exceptional and nothing can top that. Not even, I think, winning the Europa League. Really? Um, yeah. That that run was amazing. And it set it, it set the ground for what Ajax is now. I mean, from there on, Ajax became a whole different level and on Europe, uh, always challenging for the one-two spot in the group phase. And uh, I think we were unlucky this year with Mohamed Kudus getting injured. Um, and and Promes not being informed because of that uh, stabbing issue, and I think they're also with Onana, you know, with um, with the doping thing. So I think a lot of stuff happened in Ajax, and and now just such a win streak in a year where ev all this happens. It's just you have to respect it, man. It's um, I have a lot of respect for what what is happening in Ajax now. Thomas, well, can I, I ask you? Can I ask you if you share the opinion of Papimento? So, if we would imagine we would win all three prizes, the treble this season, it still would not be as huge for you as the 2018-19 season. I share the sentiment, but for a a bit different reason. Um, you remember the Champions League final in 1996? We got revenge in 1819 for that. End of story. There's, there's no way. Because of the UEFA final, you mean? That we yes, lost. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Europa League is never going to give you something like that. Also, you know, the, the 10 out of 10 game by Tadic in Madrid. That's that's almost different spot than Europa League. And do not get me wrong. I would love to win the Europa League. Uh, I'd love to, you know, uh, see a very significant difference between the current team and uh, what Bosch did. Yeah, because we're maybe not twice, but almost uh, twice the team right now. Uh, but eighteen nineteen was something else. So yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, we we manage uh, to 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 win to win everything. Uh, I really believe uh, we're, we're we're capable of doing that. But yeah, I hundred percent agree with Thomas. I think we're capable of winning the Europa League, and I think we're a contender for any team. Um, I, I think the highest 
or the toughest opponent is Manchester United. For, for why I. is that? Why is that? Because um, they can really play their game against Ajax. Ajax likes the ball. They don't like the ball that much and they love to counter. Uh, and they do it on a different level than Lyon. Sorry, than Lille and, uh, and Young Boys. So uh, much more quality. So if Ajax is on fire, I have no doubt we can win that. But it depends on the form of the day, I guess. Yeah. I just want to ask our viewers also to share their opinion on this one. So imagine us winning the treble this season. Would that be as big or bigger than the Champions League season of 2018-19? Or do you share the sentiments of Thomas and uh, Papimento of, uh, no, nothing can top that this season? So let us know what you think. I have one more point to add to this season. Um, something that's maybe uh, overlooked. I just want your opinion on this one. How much does it benefit? I mean, of course, for the fans, this is horrible season. No fans, everything. But look at it the other way. How much better is it for Ten Hag to work with a team without interference from the fans? Because there has been a couple of situations this season. If there were fans sitting in the arena, they would have made an impact on the players on a negative side. And I can come up with a couple. Uh, recently, Broby, for instance. Mm. Also, but also Schuurs, for instance. Labiat, Promes. They had, they had a couple of games. They were not that good. And it kept showing and showing and showing. And you know that the fans in Amsterdam, they're one of the most critical fans there, there, are, there is. Mm -hmm. And now this is excluded, you know? It doesn't matter if they play bad, of course. Ten Hag knows when they're playing bad and the players know when they're playing bad. But there's no outside force, you know, to make it even worse for them. So how much do you see that also as a benefit for them this season, for Ajax? Well, just one uh, thing. Uh, yes, Manchester United will be the hardest. Yeah. Uh, because it will be heartbreaking to see Donny play against us. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I believe um, that uh, the, the fanless uh, season might be a bit of a benefit. Uh, uh, still, I wouldn't overestimate it. It's uh, you know, eighteen nineteen. We 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 come to uh, we come back to uh, a lot. We had our dips in the form there as well. Uh, we had one particular away game. Uh, we yeah, that shouldn't have happened. Um, we've had uh, criticism of, of many, many players uh, at that time. Uh, like, you know, there was a time some people said uh, our captain at the time wasn't ready yet. Uh, we had some doubts about Onana's form, uh, about Dolberg. Uh, well, rightfully so at that time, unfortunately. Uh, still, we managed uh, to, to, to overcome this. And also, yeah, our Ajax, I would expect uh, our players and all and our manager to be able to overcome all that. Yeah, it might have been a, a bit of a help, but that much? Not that much, I believe. Yeah. In, uh, in, well, one aspect, but, you know, there are many aspects. Just one of them. Not very important, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, other clubs should just be happy there are no uh, 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 fans in the stadium because uh, if they played at Ajax uh, with how they're playing now without fans just imagine what the beating would be with fans in the stadium yeah. so um, yeah that's one and um, I just want to come back to what you said about uh, uh, the Champions League run we had if we compare it I do think our, our squad depth is much bigger than what we had there and we were just very, I wouldn't say lucky, but you saw there that Ten Hag played Frankie and the Licht always, and they didn't get injured. So we, yeah, I mean, that's that's a very big deal uh, in that season. Yeah, no, absolutely. The squad depth this season um, is really is really helping us as well throughout the season because of the compressed scheduling. And uh, I remember the run, the 2018-19 run, as you said, Papimento, um, we were playing a lot of the same players and, uh, you know, knock on wood, the players were, yeah, the most of the players were injury free. So that also helped us. Um, so, yeah, that's correct. Look, at the end of the day, we're all happy at the situation right now. Um, are there any last thoughts from you guys about this season or anything in particular you want to share? 
uh, this is the time. Let me know. Yeah, there is one thing. Um, I'm just happy to to watch football. Uh, <laughs> we play. Uh, it's not a matter of, of results we achieve, but that also helps a bit. Uh, yeah, but there's so much joy. Uh, there's so much, you know, uh, the Den Haag game. Uh, well, love to see, um, help our uh, beloved friends uh, to, you know, go where they need to go. Um, but there were so many pieces of football that, you know, reminded me of, for example, that, uh, you know, there's this, there's this video that... Uh, rolls over and over uh, on, on Twitter uh, from the Juventus game, you know, the, the piece that uh, started with Onana and ended up, ended with, uh, with, uh, with yeah. Ziyech. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we see glimpses of, uh, well, maybe not even glimpses, something like that we see all the time almost. And yeah, that's, that brings joy to my heart. Uh, and uh, I'm, up, I'm very grateful to all the players and um, Ten Hag that uh, I get this, that's, I get to have fun from all of this. And that's the whole point, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, and my final point is this. I think uh, we didn't reach our ceiling yet. I think there's a lot of uh, stretch in our team. Uh, if you look at Neres, I don't think we're, he is where he's supposed to be yet. Kudus is not there yet. Uh, Anthony, if he makes more runs to the, <laughs> to the corner flag and gives a proper uh, a crossing, uh, that would be also um, a better Ajax. So, uh, yeah, enough enough points to grow for Ajax, but uh, we are looking so tough and strong. I'm so happy with this team. Guys, I can feel it, man. I can. You want to subscribe. 